What's Shake and Bacons? I thought today I would do something a little bit different just because I've had enough people ask me about this, both on the stream and in the YouTube video comments, that I thought maybe I would do a video on it. And if you guys enjoy it, or if you want to see more things like that, you can just let me know. I think really only my stream knows this about me because I know I don't talk a lot about myself on the YouTube channel as much, but in the stream, when people ask me questions live, I can answer them. My bachelor's degree is actually in literature. And and I love reading. I specialized in science fiction and fantasy <laughs> for my degree because um, I really love science fiction and fantasy. It's like my thing. It's always been my thing. They are my favorite genres of all time. There's a reason why you guys see me get super excited about things like Marvel and science fiction films and Star Wars and things like that because I love science fiction and I love fantasy. They are my favorite genres ever. And that's also why you'll probably never really see me talking about romantic comedies because I'm just, uh, I'm one of those gals, it's not in my wheelhouse. I'm not one of those people. So I thought I would talk about some of the books and book series that I reread every year, but I'm gonna touch on them very briefly and just tell you guys like what my favorites are. I have stacks, I have like two little stacks of books in front of me. I've got that little stack and I've got this stack of just books that I reread every year. And I do reread series every year because as you go from day to day, the knowledge that you have and the experiences you have change. So you learn more and you grow. And when you go back to a story that you've experienced in the past with a new mindset and new knowledge, you actually take in and perceive that story differently. So even though it's the same core story, the way that I read it based on when I've read it changes and I get different things out of it or I notice elements to the story I wouldn't have noticed before, which I think is cool. And there are just some stories and authors that I love so much that I constantly reread them. I wanted to talk about the books and the book series that I reread every year. I think there's one, let me just double check. There is only one series in here that is not science fiction or fantasy. So I will leave that toward the end. The first book series, and this is my favorite book series of all time, there's nothing that even comes close to it for me, except for Garth Nix, I think. So I'll talk about that next. But my favorite book series of all time is Jim Butcher's Dresden Files series. Jim Butcher is one of the few authors I have ever read that just takes sheer unrestrained joy in the art of writing. If you want a fun series that is dark, that is sexy, that is full of modern day magic detective murder. There's, I'm not gonna lie, it's lots of, vi it's, there's very violent. If this book, if this series had a rating as a video game, it would be rated M. Like this is not for kids. It's not for people with weak stomachs really. This is an amazing series though. And it's one of those series that has a lot of books, but they're super easy to get into. They're easy to read. They're fun to read. And it's one of those masterful works where the author actually has an overarching plot that as you start nearing the end of the series, it all the threads start to come together and you're like, oh my God, I had no idea. And then you go back and reread it and you're like, that's what they were talking about in this book, in book number five. Holy smokes. I never even caught that. It's fantastic. So this is like adult Harry Potter on steroids with lots of sexiness. Really, really good series, super fun series. I highly recommend it. This is the first one, it's called Stormfront, and I seriously suggest you give this a shot. I have fallen in love with the series. I reread it constantly. I think I have read it actually once or twice a year. This is one I reread constantly. The next series, which is like my second favorite series of all time, is Garth Nix's Abhorson Trilogy. This is technically considered young adult fiction. It's not really. The magical thing about this series is that it's about necromantic magic in a different universe, but it is very dark and it talks about it in a way that I've never ever seen described before. The characters are facing a very, very great evil power and they have to use almost like a light side version of necromancy in order to fight the evils of necromancy. And there are different levels and gates through death that they have to travel through. I realize this sounds insane, but this is seriously an amazingly written book series. I highly recommend giving it a try. It is listed as young adult fiction. It's, it's seriously not. And this is one of the few book series I have ever read that as you read it, it's so 
visually beautifully descriptive that you can almost watch it like it's a movie in your head. It's not like a standard reading experience. When I read this, I see what's happening almost like it's a film that I'm watching. And this is one of those very beautifully complex and intriguing stories that I reread every year. It goes Sabriel, Liriel, Abhorsen. Amazing, amazing trilogy. Garth Nix is a master at fantasy, highly recommend this series. The next series I recommend is by Brandon Sanderson and it is his Mistborn trilogy. Brandon Sanderson is a pretty well-known author. He's mostly known for his contributions to the Wheel of Time series. Now, I'm not a fan of the Wheel of Time series. I know a lot of people are. I've heard they're great. I personally could not get into them and that's why there's so many different book series because you can't like them all, right? This one, however, is really intriguing. It almost reminds me of an adult avatar the last airbender with metal. So the people in this universe can burn different metals in their stomachs and it gives them special powers, almost like magnetic powers. This is also one of those kind of rated R, rated M style books if I was going to give a book a rating. It's very, very dark and full of depth and intrigue. If you like Avatar The Last Airbender and you want a more adult version, highly recommend this book series. There are three in the trilogy. It is definitely worth reading. And it ends up being a mixture of science fiction and fantasy. So I guess technically you could classify it as either hard fantasy or soft science fiction. But this one, very intriguing. You'll get to the end of this first one. This is the first one, Mistborn. You'll get to the end of the first one and you'll be like, and then you go on to the second and then the last one and you're like, Yay! It's just very mind-blowing, very well done, amazing, amazing, amazing plot development, and very, very well-rounded characters. I highly suggest giving this one a read. Did I mention I'm actually talking about fantasy first? I'm going fantasy, then science fiction, then the one normal one that I have? Okay. The next one is, of course, Harry Potter. Now, I grew up on the Harry Potter series. I know a lot of people, surprisingly, have not read these, and I really do recommend reading these at least once in your life. The intriguing thing about Harry Potter is that, first of all, the books are not the movies. I wanna say right now, I know a lot of people love the Harry Potter films. I don't like the Harry Potter films. The books are so much more well-rounded and there's so much more depth to the characters and to the world that it is stunning in its difference. I think part of it's because they kept swapping directors that contributed to the issues that they had with portraying the books as fully as they could. But the series starts, this first one is Sorcerer's Stone, of course. It starts off very simply. And I know a lot of people got turned off by that. It starts simply and then as the characters age, the level of, the level of detail and the level at which these novels are written rapidly rise in age with the the characters. There is so much depth and interwoven information and sheer thought put in by J.K. Rowling to this series that I highly suggest reading these at least once. Get through the first book, you get to the second book, and you can see where it's starting to elevate itself to a higher level, and then you hit the third one, which is Prisoner of Azkaban, and that's where the series just starts growing. And you start seeing these levels of depth the author has written in. Fantastic. So of course, Harry Potter is a series about a boy who is born a wizard, didn't know it. His parents died and um, he finds out he's a wizard and he has to go on and face a mortal enemy who is the one who killed his parents. And I don't want to go on any more than that. That's a very dumbed down version of this plot over the course of these novels. But if you have not read the series, there is a reason why this is as popular as it is. This series actually reminds me a lot of Game of Thrones. Some people People will not read or watch things based on the fact that they are so popular. Please take my word for it. Like I started reading these before they got popular. Could not believe how well done they are and some things get popular for a reason. It's because they are so well done. This is one of those series that is so well done. There's a reason why it's popular. So don't be closed-minded. Don't be a snob. Give it a chance if you haven't given it a chance already and give these a read. I reread them every year. I pick up new things every year and I'm impressed every year. The last fantasy book that I have that I reread every year is by Elizabeth Kostova, The Historian. This is a book about the legend of Vlad Dracul. It is the story of historians and their research and interest in the history of the legend of Vlad Dracul and then they discover that he's actually real and he's alive. It's very scary. I actually just got chills talking about this because the first time I read this, I was so freaked out that I was, I finished 
no. Did I finish reading it? I was reading it really late at night one night and I walked into the bathroom and there was a shadow on the wall. It looked like a person was outside the window and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this. I legitimately froze in fear for a good five minutes afraid to move because I, this book is so realistic and it seems so real that I was convinced because they talk about how once you know he's there, you kind of become a target because you've acknowledged he, he's alive. Sort of is a very condensed version of what happens. And I was convinced that because I read this, that Vlad Dracul had tracked me down. And I stood frozen in my bathroom for like five full minutes until I was able to breathe. I was like, he hasn't killed me yet. I'm gonna go look out the window and it was a branch and I was like, oh my god, I'm so stupid But that should tell you like the power of the writing of Elizabeth Kostova writing about Vlad Dracul and how evil this dude is. It's 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 crazy, man. I really recommend this. It sounds dry if you read the back description. I keep saying Vlad Dracul. He's known by his historical name as Vlad the Impaler. This is really, really, really interesting. I will say this book is actually what really made me want to visit Istanbul, and someday I hope to visit Istanbul, but haven't been able to yet. Anyway, highly recommend this book. Two thumbs up for this one. Time to talk about science fiction. Remember, these are ones I only reread every year. Like if you guys want, if you're interested enough, I can do other quick videos on like my top science fiction. These are the books in the series that I reread every year. This is not like my top favorite all time science fiction or fantasy or whatever. These are just the ones I happen to reread every year. So if you guys want videos like that and you like the book talks enough, just let me know and I can do more of those. But these are the ones that I reread every year. I've talked about Jeff Vandermeer's series, The Southern Reach Trilogy before in my review. This book series is one of the few book series I have read that was so subtly terrifying because it focuses on what is in between the lines as you're reading and it calls attention to the fact that you should be focusing on what's not being observed and not being said as the biologist moves into this what they call area x and is attempting to find out what happened to her husband who got lost there this is one of the few science fiction series that a impacted me so much that i started rereading it every year and i think this was published fairly recently this came out in 2014 yeah it came out in 2014. b this is one of the few series i have ever read where it felt like something was watching me over my shoulder the entire time i was reading and when i reread these. I constantly look behind myself because I'm terrified that there's something there. This is so subtly terrifying and it is such an interesting fresh take on a hostile alien takeover of Earth and how it impacts humanity and the local flora and fauna that I really recommend reading these. It starts off a little bit slow and then it just like rapidly escalates. Many people don't like the second or third novels. I just want to put that out there. However, I enjoy them quite a bit. I enjoy the full series. I do acknowledge that I think Annihilation is the best of the three books, but this is another series that since it has come out, I have reread it every year and I love it, even though I didn't like the movie. Another sci-fi series that I reread every year is Anne McCaffrey's Crystal Singer series. Now, Anne McCaffrey is like the grandmother of science fiction. She is most well known for her Dragon Riders of Pern book series, and this is actually why I never got into or liked the Aragon books, because Anne McCaffrey has been writing since the 80s, I believe, maybe even before that. Her Dragon Riders of Pern series has been out for like decades, and then Aragon came out, and it seems almost like half of it was straight lifted out of Anne McCaffrey, and I could not get on board with that. So there's a reason I don't like the Aragon series, but Anne McCaffrey is an amazing science fiction author. And my favorite series by her is called Crystal Singer. I love the Dragon Riders of Pern too, don't get me wrong, but the Crystal Singer is a very unique series because it talks about interstellar communications and the hazards of mining valuable commodities on different planets. It sounds kind of bogus when you read about it, but it's such an interesting premise and the characters have to have perfect pitch in some way in order to mine to conduct interstellar trade and communication. It sounds crazy, but there's a reason why this is one of the series I reread every year. Anne McCaffrey, God rest her soul, 
is an amazing, amazing author. And this series is one of the ones she's done that is just so unique compared to other science fiction stories that I've read that I can't get over this. I've loved this since I first read it. This was originally published in 1982 and it's still the bomb. I love this series. Anne McCaffrey, if you have never read her, even if you're not interested in this series, I highly recommend checking out like her Dragon Riders of Pern series. Some of the other novels that she's really well known for, she is like, I'm not kidding when I tell you, like if Philip K. Dick, she's like the female version of Philip K. Dick, okay? And if you don't know who he is either, then you need to educate yourself on the grandfather of science fiction, okay? Another science fiction series I reread every year, and this is actually a young adult series, is The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games is one of the few young adult series that I really enjoy that is science fiction, and I feel like a lot of the series that came after this one really just copied it, and so I don't have the energy or the patience for those, like that Divergent series particularly. If you guys like that, please don't take any offense. Just for me personally, I felt strongly like they were all copying Suzanne Collins because she hit a winning formula with this series. The Hunger Games, while it was probably inspired to a degree by the original Battle Royale, has a very interesting take on a dystopian future, and the growth that the character undergoes is very, very interesting and gripping in this world and it's very full of action and violence and actually Suzanne Collins when she originally wrote this did not intend it to be a young adult series she actually told the publisher that this was written for adults but the publishers as they often do decided since the protagonist was under the age of 18 that it would be marketed as a young adult novel so technically the author did not intend for this to be a young adult series and it just kind of ended up being that way but this is of course a very violent series if you haven't heard of this yet you must be living under a rock because this was a sensation a couple years ago. This series is incredibly well written. It's very impressive to me and it's if you can't tell, I really like dark series. And this is a dark dystopian series that I very much so enjoy. If you haven't read this either, I really recommend giving this a shot. We're almost to the end, I got four more. The next science fiction book that I reread every year is Alan Dean Foster's The Dig. And you can tell I have put this sucker through its paces. Look how dead my poor paperback is. Um, I bought this brand new <laughs> if this tells you anything. Alan Dean Foster is actually a very well-known author. He's written some Star Wars books, he's written some Star Trek books, he's written Dinotopia, which is such a fun book. I'm gonna have to reread that too. He's also written some of the Aliens novels, Transformer novels. Our guy is prolific and he's a very good author. The Dig is one of his original novels. It is about scientists that go to explore an anomaly that has appeared in the universe and what happens to them. And this one is just a very, very intriguing read. It really kind of touches on how humans would react when exposed to an alien system and alien technology. I just really enjoy the premise of that. Actually, shout out to Lagadder. Lagadder is one of my Twitch followers and I'm assuming probably one of my YouTube followers. Lagadder actually got me the game version of The Dig and I didn't even know that there was a video game of The Dig, so I'm super excited to try that out. I love The Dig. This is such a classic, classic novel and it's probably like pennies now because this came out in 1995 published and we can entertainment. highly recommend this it's a fun standalone this is not a series he's a standalone another standalone that i reread constantly is the highest frontier by joan slonkjewski this is not a book that i think a lot of people would like and the reason why is it's not an action novel it's not a thriller there's not really a central story or plot or direction for this novel. Why I reread this novel every year is because this has been one of the single most excellent at predicting the future novels that I have ever, ever encountered. Can I just make a quick side note? I know it looks like I stole a library book, but I bought this legitimately off of thriftbooks.com. They sell old library books that libraries don't need anymore. This was a legitimate purpose. I did not steal this book. This novel came out in 2011. And since then, something that the author has predicted has almost come true just about every freaking year that has passed since this was written. To the point that it's very eerie. I reread this every year just to like rediscover what new things she predicted have come true because it's 
It's eerie. The premise of the story is about a Kennedy who is descended from the famous Kennedy line in the future and her experiences as the Earth is slowly undergoing an alien invasion. That sounds sort of like I'm contradicting the fact that I said earlier that there's not really a plot to this, but that's that's really not the case. That is like the context in which the story happens. And it's about how countries are reacting to this, how the younger generation is reacting to this. And she's going to a college in space on a crazy space station. And what happens there, what happens with genetic editing, what happens with viruses in the future, people actually get infected with viruses via the, the net that they're part of, the influence of social media, where things are headed in terms of building, in terms of printing, in terms of industry, in terms of politics. It's just so, so interesting. The way it's written, I'm not gonna lie, is kind of confusing. I had to read it twice before I fully grasped where the author was heading. Since then, this has been one that I reread every year because like I said, it's eerie how spot on she's been with all of her predictions, man. I kind of read this because it makes me feel like uh, I know what's gonna happen in the future because so much of it has actually happened. This one is gonna kind of be confusing. This is my favorite science fiction short story anthology. This one is Masterpieces the best science fiction of the 20th century. And it features, of course, Asimov, uh, Arthur C. Clarke, William Gibson, Robert Heinlein, Ursula K. Le Guin. It's edited by our boy Orson Scott Card. This has some amazing, amazing short stories in it. Some you may have already read if you've read compilations from these authors before. There are so many different concepts and intriguing premises in this compendium that this is my favorite short story compendium and I love science fiction compendiums. I own several of them. This is my favorite one. I think it was so well edited and the stories were so well chosen. If you enjoy reading short stories and if you enjoy sampling different flavors of writing and different genres and tropes in science fiction, this one is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful compendium. The last book series that I reread every year is not science fiction, nor is it fantasy. It's just a bubblegum novel series that is just ridiculous, but I like it because it makes me laugh. And sometimes books get heavy. And I just showed you guys, there's a lot of, like, I really like dark dystopian type books. And so sometimes my brain just needs a break. And I like to read really dumb, fluffy, funny novels. And when I feel like I need a break and I need some kind of dumb, fluffy novel, I read the Janet Ivanovich Stephanie Plum series. But it's just about a woman who loses her job. She tries to become a bounty hunter and she sucks at it, but she's really lucky. So she always ends up in these absurd situations and she's got an insane family. It's based out of New Jersey. So on top of the already fairly funny premise and character development, you have it set against a Jersey mafia type backdrop that makes it funnier. So whenever I get to the point in my year where I've been reading a lot of heavy things and my brain just needs like a freaking break, man, I just break out this series and I reread it. There's like, I don't even know how many books are in this series by now. There's gotta be a million books. Janet Ivanovich is a very, very funny, funny author. So whenever my brain just needs to take a break and read something funny, I go to the series. I reread it like once a year. It's hilarious. Definitely one of those rated M book series though. It's very funny and this is kind of the series. It's like a bubblegum series. I think everybody's got something that they like to read or watch that you know is not good, but you enjoy the hell out of it anyway. And this is one of those for me. Is it gonna win any Nobel prizes? No. Does it make me laugh until I have tears in my eyes? Yes, and that's what matters to me. I think that wraps up my little book discussion. These are the books and the series that I reread at least once a year. Of course, the rest of the year I read other things, but these are the ones that I find I consistently, on a year-to-year -year basis, go back and revisit and re-experience. What series do you like to read or reread? Do you have any recommendations for me? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys decide to give any of these a try, 
I think you should let me know. If you want to find them quickly, I will do my best to have links to all of them in the description box below on Amazon. You don't have to try and go back through the video and piece together all of the different books and series I discussed. I should have links to them all below. Let me know if you decide to read any of them and what you think about them. Or if you've read these before and you agree with me or you disagree with me, tell me why. Let's have an interesting discussion about this. And in the meantime, I hope you're all doing amazingly and I will catch you later.